I had the opportunity to go to any school in the area, and two of my top choices would have been, for example, Trinity or UVM. And I intentionally didn't choose those schools because I didn't want to be at the receiving end of my learning. I wanted to create my own learning. I'm not saying that Burlington College would work for everyone, but what I am saying that it works for some, and it's worth ex ex exploring. You know, if you're inter interested in non-traditional approaches to education, if you're a different kind of learner. I just think that traditional schools sometimes train people to, to go to sleep intellectually and to be fed and that's just not true around here. You synthesize who you are when you come here with what you learn so you come out with knowledge that is really usable and that's also really connected to you. This school requires your active participation. It requires critical thinking. It requires creativity and imagination and diligence and respect and all these other factors that happen when you're in a small small group setting. You can make mistakes here and it's safe to make those mistakes and the worst thing that can happen to you as a result of making those mistakes is that you're going to learn something. Most of our students, uh, learners, have a variety of different backgrounds, uh, some having been out of school many, many years and done many different things and come back to college because they want, want to be here as opposed to being sent by, by their parents. And they come back with incredible uh, backgrounds and experience and knowledge. The level of maturity, some of the young women who, who go to school here, they just seem so mature and so smart. And it really, it's really impressed me a lot. Most students here at Burnley College are self-motivated, and they're they're here to learn, um, not because they have to, but because they want to. I think one of the biggest secrets here is the is the quality of the faculty. Um, we we draw faculty the, from all of the other colleges as well as people who only teach here. And the depth and quality of their knowledge is uh, amazing. When you come into a classroom here, the feeling you have is that the instructor is one of you. He's interested or she's interested in learning from you if you have anything to offer. And the assumption generally is that you do. And they're sensitive to, you know, the difficulty uh, that uh, older students have in terms of managing their lives, their children's lives, um, and, and what that all involves, and, and that they, they are sensitive to, to, to those issues. I think students' relationship with professors is very different here because it's so immediate, because you're sitting across a table from one another, um, and there's an active exchange going on in the classroom. The freedom that I have to explore new ideas and to try out new courses and new experiments is um, unparalleled in the other places that I teach. They are really passionate about what they're teaching and, uh, and that's contagious. They really are the heart and soul of this institution. First of all, the size of the, the classroom tends to be smaller, so you have more of an intimate discussion. I think the type of teachers here really facilitates the student to talk. It's not usually a lecture, it's usually a discussion. And you can talk about things here that you can't talk about in other more traditional modes of learning. We all bring a unique set of experiences to this learning situation, and that's what gives it substance. It's not just, I go there and I become a sponge and that's it, there is no interaction. You know, what happens here is it's interactive and it's fun. All the classes are seminar size classes and participation is really encouraged. And so there really is uh, um, a lot of shared learning. I have an opportunity to respond in my way to the material that I've been asked to study. I'm not asking, I'm not being asked to regurgitate what the book says. I'm being asked to respond to it 
and think about it and how do I feel about it? And, um, and that's really different. I may have planned a class in a certain way, but I may have to shift some of those plans or have different emphasis depending on who the students are and what their interests are. Teachers are always giving you examples of places to go to learn, you know, whether it's, you know, an opera if you're in a music class or, you know, to a, a poetry reading if you're in a poetry writing class. And so there's a lot of ways to learn here and it isn't, isn't just in the classroom. I'm involved in a guided independent study as well as an action learning where I get the opportunity to not just study the theories but to practice them in a work setting which I've, there's nothing like it. You can read a book and graduate, get a job, forget what was in that book, but I have the opportunity to incorporate it right into my work and in a way that I probably won't forget it. In a class here, you're from 18 to 65, and people have been around, and people have been with people, and, and people treat each other like people. It's a lot different than being at a university where everyone's just coming out of high school. If you think of the pattern, the rich pattern of, of uh, diversity in this country, we capture as much of that pattern as we can in the diverse students that we have here and the richness of that pattern comes into the discussions in any seminar that a student takes. I think it really adds to the classroom environment. I think it's one thing to talk about um, racism as an example in a, a totally white classroom and quite another when you have a mixed group. And I think it's a, it, a much more enriching experience when it's a problem that we all share instead of a problem that one group has about another. I've gone to school here with people I never thought I'd ever have anything to do with, have anything in common with, or have anything to say to. And um, I, that, that part has been really, it's been wonderful. The instructors appreciate, you know, the diversity that's there and, and are responsive to it. You know, given their own experiences. Um, and that they respect the student's voice there's not a lot more you can do <laughs> you know and I don't think that's more than anybody can ask of another person is that they respect you know the uniqueness of my experiences I do have a very good relationship with my advisor. I would call my advisor and I friends. And um, in some ways, she's, she's my confidant. I mean, I can would tell her when things are getting tough, when I feel like dropping out of school. I mean, I work full time, so sometimes it gets to be too much. I can go tell her that. And she will both hear me, and then she'll also act as my academic advisor and tell me what I need to know to keep going to school and keep enjoying the process. Your advisor is there to help you. Your advisor isn't policing you. Your advisor is you know, trying to get inside your head to help you in, with your education. I can take it to them at different levels. I can say, look, I am freaking out. You know, I've got four papers due in three weeks, you know, and it's my fault, but I need to tell somebody I'm freaking out. And they'll understand that. I've got, and I get a good perspective from them. And it's helped me more than once. It's not at all unusual for us to make a phone call or put a note in a student's box. I understand you're having trouble in such and such class. Um, give me a call, come see me. The ERC is, uh, provides all sorts of services, almost anything that a student needs in order to be able to succeed as a learner. My experience of the ERC is that they are more than willing, always extending an open hand to students. They, they want to help you. They want you to have a good experience of the school. It provides all sorts of uh, professional and peer tutoring, faculty tutoring uh, in any subject matter. Uh, a great deal of support in writing, which is one of the things that many, many students are afraid, afraid of. How does one begin to develop those skills? How does one begin to get familiar with, with the new technology that's available? 
um, how does one begin to, to truly be able to take advantage of how to use libraries. And ERC is there to do all that. It's really ideal situation to be able to know people and work with them and have an ongoing relationship where you feel you, you, know, you can really be a resource for somebody to, I, I mean, sometimes, you know, for someone to graduate. That's a, that's a big deal to graduate from college. The percentage of students here that get financial aid is very, very high. It's in the 90% um, sort of bracket. And so that's, that's why providing financial aid leads one to get to know almost all the students, because almost all the students take advantage of some form of financial aid. I guess it depends on what your financial status is. But uh, if, if you want to go to school, I was always told that you can find a way. The money's out there. You just have to access it. I did need financial aid, most definitely. And uh, I thought, or I think that the financial aid office is very good. I mean, it's a small school, so you get that one-on-one -on -one personal attention that you probably can't get at larger universities or colleges. Financial aid office here is, they're really good. They really know what they're doing, and they're really helpful. And they, you know, again, you know, they know everybody, so you get a lot of personal attention. I find the quality of the education here to be a lot higher than what I've experienced before because I put so much of myself into it. So I retain what I learn more than I have before. It stays with me because it's much more alive. It's happening right now. It's not studying about the future. It's one thing to hand in a paper and get back an A because the teacher gives you an A, and it's another thing to get handed back a paper that has, that has commentary, uh, you know, uh, corrections, ideas, suggestions, um, and then you take that information and you decide what you want to do with that. It's not, uh, to me, grades is almost like getting you off the hook, and there's, there's less communication for me in, in receiving a grade at the top of my paper. I think the essential mission of the college is to bring learners together, student learners for a liberal arts AA or BA degree, um, and faculty learners and teachers. I'm getting an education that I can do something with. I'm doing, you know, action projects and and really thinking about you know, how am I going to take this education and, and make some real change in the world? The key quality of learning at Burlington College is that you are synthesizing what you learn with who you are so that it becomes truly yours and truly usable in the outside world. I grew up not valuing my own opinion and not learning to express that. And what I'm doing at Burlington College is finding out who I am and finding out that I am valued and that I have good opinions and that somebody really cares about that. If I had to describe Burlington College in a single word, it would be independent-minded. Alive. A learning home. Adults learning. Challenging. Open. Creative personal and practical. Realistic. An exciting alternative. Life enhancing. Caring. Fun. It's a great school. What makes me most proud about this school is our graduates. Uh, the people who have walked in the door here feeling very unsure of themselves who then exit two, four, six, sometimes 20 years later. Uh, and have gone on and done incredible things that we have been a part of making them, helping them uh, do. That's what makes me most proud.